up, everybody? Aaron here. Got Zach. What's up? We going to do a commentary for a movie that Zach has been talking about for a very long time. Uh, Stay tuned. Starring the uh, late John Ritter. The motherfucking John Ritter. He's my boy. Very excited about it because when Zach first told me about this movie uh, a couple years ago, he he triggered something because this is a movie to me that was long forgotten. But once he started talking about it, I had repressed memories of it. Like I rem- now and it's like, oh, my God, you're right. I haven't thought about this movie in years. But when I was a little kid, like I'm talking three or four or whatever this movie. OK, this movie came out in 92. So maybe when I was si- you know, six or seven, mm-hmm. I remember seeing trailers for it. And because and, and the only thing, you know, when you're a uh, you're young you have selective memory of things Mm -hmm. this is how selective it is like so selective that i forgot all about it like i forgot this movie existed but the only thing i remember is like in the trailer him going through tvs and him being in the set of wayne's world that's it (laughs) that's the only fucking thing i don't know anything else about the movie and it just triggered it and you're like oh that's the guy from three's company i want to suck his dick exactly so that's what we're gonna watch and uh i think it's great hopefully hopefully zach it's not a bad commentary for me to do having basically never seen it i mean am i gonna be able to kind of enjoy this at the same time you think i think so yeah i mean feel free to watch it again after you're done without talking i wanted to watch this before we did it actually i just didn't um didn't mm-hmm. get around to it, but uh, feel free to be extra informative in this commentary and kind of keep me in the know because I'm a new viewer. But anyway, we're not going to waste any time. Do you know if this is a DVD rip? Um, I think so. Basically, when we push play, the Warner Brother logo pops up. So sadly, I think this DVD is out of print. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't know it was on DVD, man. I've it's not on Blu-ray. I've never seen a physical copy. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, you, you. You mentioned something about seeing if it's on Voodoo. It's not. This is why. This is why it makes sense that after um, twenty-six years, I would forget this movie even exists. It's wiped from my memory because I've never once in the last twenty-six years seen it for rent, seen it for sale on. Mm-hmm. DVD, VHS, or anything. I like think the the first time I saw it, it was on like Encore or something years ago, and that and that makes sense. But I just, yeah, it's just it'd be different if it was like, oh, Dutch. I've seen that movie for rent a million times. Oh, uh-huh. you know, it's, there's those movies that we know exist. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this one's just been so I don't know deleted from history that uh, it went over my head. But anyway, we're gonna push play, and it's gonna pop up with the Warner Brothers logo, and that's basically we are. If you happen to have a copy of the movie, I doubt you do. But um, anyway, we're going to do the 3, 2, 1 countdown. 3, 2, 1, play. Uh, the Warner Brothers, that just made me think, uh, fucking, I think Screen Factory got some Warner Brothers movies recently because they're putting out fucking uh, Brain Scan. Finally, that's one of our... Um that's one of our heavies, man. That was one of the first commentaries we did with me. And we said since day one, we were praying that uh, this is kind of before Arrow was really on the radar. But like a few years ago, when Screen Factory started busting out with all these classics, we're like, we just wanted them to get their hands on Brain Scan, the mm-hmm. Eddie Furlong Trick or Treat, and Pet Cemetery 2. Hell yeah. We got Brain Scan, which is pretty great. Um, you said the Eddie Furlong Trick or Treat. Eddie Furlong's not in Trick or Treat. Oh, <laughs> I got him mixed up. Um, <laughs> the Ragman Trick That'd or Treat. That would have been awesome if Eddie Furlong was in Trick or Treat. I, if he played Ragman? <laughs> it's a little it's a little uh, dated for him because it's late 80s. Yeah. No, 86, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's 86. Yeah, he would have been a fucking baby. Baby Furlong. So I, I sent Screen Factory a thing because also they can put this out under the Shout Factory because they, they put out, you know, Bill and Ted and shit. And I, I told them, I was like, yeah, if, if you guys can do Warner Brothers and, you know, of course they get the whole back catalog from, uh, you know, New Line Cinema with the, in the, if they get that. And I was like, yeah, you guys should put out a Critters box set and put out Angus on Blu-ray. That'd be awesome. That motherfucking movie's great. Why, there's a movie that they did announce that was a Shout Factory, and I saw it. I'm like, oh, it's a good fucking movie, and I can't remember what it was. They just re- uh, announced Return of the Living Dead 2. Cool. That's an, that one's going to make Riverman really happy. with the. Uh, that one's on Warner Brothers. With the fixed soundtrack. Yep, fixed soundtrack. 
But no, there was a Shout Factory labeled movie, not a Scream Factory. It wasn't a horror movie. A movie they announced literally. I saw it today, and I can't remember what it was, but I saw it. And I'm like, oh, that's a good flick. Ah, I, I saw it too, and I don't remember what it was. But it wasn't this, was it? No. You would have definitely remembered that. Yeah. But anyway, James G. Robinson. <laughs> now my phone's going off. I fucking sent you a message. I. I it's so funny. Okay. So you guys aren't going to hear it. He sent me a message action. to edit out his alarm. And I did that. So basically, I didn't have to bring it up in the podcast. But since he fucking didn't turn his phone off, we can't avoid it. Uh, so it just made two noises. <laughs> so that's funny. <laughs> so basically, Jeffrey Jones is in this, man. They let him out. Jeffrey fucking Jones. So like, basically, when you guys hear this podcast, you're not going to hear an alarm. My phone go off. Maybe we should just keep him in now. <laughs> no, just take it out. All right. But you got to leave your fucking ding in there because that's funny. All right. <laughs> that's funny because then then none of it will make sense. So, anyway, Eugene Levy's in this? Hell yeah. Okay. It's also got the, the Mindy chick from Mork and Mindy. She's hot as fuck in this movie. Oh, yeah? This is a pre-resurgence of Eugene Levy before he was in American Pie and they started putting Eugene Levy in everything for about like three years. Mm-hmm. Look at these credits. They pop it out at you. Oh, no, it's going to hit me. Oh, it's like Tata Turtle, man. It is kind of like that, yeah. A little bit. Um, there was some other like news bits, though, I wanted to go over, which I thought were cool. I mean, obviously, you ne- you mentioned the um, the various new releases, which is cool, but there's some other things. Let me go ahead. And- what if it was us that got fucking brain scanned finally? Cut? What if they put our commentary on there? That'd be cool. Dude, that would be fucking awesome to do a commentary for one of those movies. <laughs> I'd love it, man. I'd come. We got to uh, say RIP to John Altamura, who played the Toxic Avenger in uh, part two and three. He died. Yeah. Found him uh, passed away. I don't know if I I don't know if I read how he died or if they even announced that. But um, RIP to him. We did the original Toxic Avenger. None of the sequels. We did. I want to do part four really bad. And I've never seen Citizen. I've never seen Part Four. Is that Citizen Toxie? Citizen Toxie. Yeah. Never seen that. I enjoy two and three, but the first one's my favorite. Yeah. Um. Uh, other news as well. I thought was of note. Here's the introduction to our man, baby. I tell you what, man. This um. Uh, they're gonna make it uh, extra hard for me to hate the Pet Cemetery remake because they just cast John Lithgow as the new Judd Crandall. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is very good. I love John Lithgow, but I still think the movie's pointless and they shouldn't remake it. It's the best adaptation movie. And it, it, it's so bleak. and They nailed that movie. They really did. There's one scene that kind of seems like it doesn't belong there. Which one? It's it's with the goofy-ass uh, old... Whenever Judd tells him the story about the old guy that they buried there... And he, it, it just, the movie just like that whole flashback has like a different tone. It seems more comedic almost. It just doesn't fit. But, it. but it's a great movie, and we know that. I don't like how these modern movies look bleak for bleak's sake. Like mm-hmm. they have this weird dingy filter in their cameras and the, the color correction. They just make it look green and shitty. Yeah, it's weird and just like dark and looks like they wipe their ass with the film. And they're gonna do it. I mean, it kind of had that look too, right? Yeah, well, it's just nowadays it's more like they they like turn down the the saturation a bit, but like circa two thousand eight they were like making the film look green, like the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake and shit. And the thing is, is this one's gonna look dreary and dingy just because of some fucking filtering effects, whereas uh, the original movie was still vibrant in its own way, but it was still bleak. I mean, they nailed it in other ways. Look at that butt chin, though. That chick's got a butt chin. I want to sodomize it. Who plays his wife? Who is that chick? Mork and Mindy. That's the Mindy chick? Yeah. I never watched any of that show. I think I've seen, like, one episode. I, I'm in love, dude. I love these fucking 90s neighborhoods you see in these movies. Mm-hmm. Did you ever watch that 90s movie with him? The Terror Tract? No, you talk about it quite often. The horror anthology. It was on YouTube for a while. I don't know if it still is. Brian Cranston. He's in it. And, uh, fucking J- Jack Tripper. No, I would, though, man. Everything he does turns to gold. The Ritter. 
The Ritz. The Ritz. But yeah, I mean, I love 90s neighborhoods, man. Movies like this. I saw those big, old, beautiful houses before they had like siding, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and same thing like Beethoven. I always wanted to live in the neighborhood that Beethoven, the Newton family lived in. Mm-hmm. I fucking love their, uh, their house. And uh, my grandmother, one of the neighborhoods I grew up in when I lived with her in Nebraska, she lived in one of those quintessential 90s neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And the last time I visited... I went through my old neighborhood and it was still pretty much intact. I mean, like it, all the houses still look nineties, but there was class. It looked, they looked great. So here's some trivia based on a story that aired on unsolved mysteries in 1987. Hmm. There was an unsolved mysteries where a guy got lost in TV. Maybe that's kind of the fiction part. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the episode they're talking about. Maybe it was a uh, really beyond fact or fiction. Maybe that was a real thing. Mm-hmm. That, that's a good show too you ever see that I yes I did I saw it was on Amazon Prime and I thought about watching it I always thought the guy from fucking uh, Star Trek started out hosting it Jonathan Frakes and then they switched to uh, the Brolin guy that was on Amityville but I guess the Brolin guy was first yeah or at least that's how they're arranged on Amazon Prime no I think that was how I remember it as well um yeah, because season one is Brolin. Yeah, I always thought it was later. It's weird. He's only on there like one season. I wonder who's the bigger name, Brolin or Jonathan Frakes. They're probably, I guess they're both the same commodity because they're both taking that job mm-hmm. at the time. So she does kind of look hot in this movie. A little older. A little older, she got some color in her hair. She's like a hotter version of uh, Rita Wilson in, in, in Turbo Man. Turbo Man! Turtle Man! Damn you, Howard. <laughs> That's a great movie. Are they gonna fuck? As is she about to straddle him? Give him a lap dance? I would come. Big old booty bouncing, walk on the shag rug. Boo! Boo! How does she button that up? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> She's backwards, man. The backwards, man. I can walk back as fast as you can. Why would they do that? Why do they make clothes that you got to button up from the back? I don't know. Doesn't make sense, though. Oh, man. Um, another thing I saw. Another cool little news blurb. Um, and I don't think it's really anything. It's nothing official. But did you see where that Fetty Alvarez guy was sort of like, Starting the hype train on Facebook about a possible Evil Dead 2. Ah, oh, yeah. He he asked, he, he put up a poll on like Twitter or something. He's like, What should I do next? Don't breathe too. Evil Dead 2. Stop making movies. It's like the only one I actually want to pick is stop making movies because I'd rather you make something original. Don't make a sequel to anything. Well, so Don't Breathe 2 is already announced. So we know that's there. So the only purpose of putting Evil Dead 2 is just to, it was nothing but a hype thing. And I think it was in response to somebody. I don't know. But if he knew what was good for him, he would, he would fucking, let's just make it a fucking closing episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Why not? Which, by the way, that is officially finished, and I can now download the Stars app and binge watch it. Did you finish the whole thing? I still need to watch the last two episodes. Okay. So I'm going to... I meant to do that this weekend, man, but I got fucking addicted to Metal Gear Solid Five finally. Exactly. That was going to be my thing, and I've been thinking about Ash vs. Evil Dead all week, and I kept telling myself, I'm going to wait till the weekend. I'm going to wait till the weekend, and... uh yeah, I mean, I guess if I'm going to do it, it'd, it'd have to be tonight and tomorrow. But maybe I'm just like in denial. Maybe I'm just sad to see it end. So I don't want to start it. I think that's kind of why I haven't started it yet. And if I don't start it, I don't have to end it. Mm-hmm. Fucking stars, man. We need to fucking bring back the uh, nemesis and say, these are the stars you got to take out now. <laughs> Fuck those stars. Take out these stars. Stars. <laughs> this is kind of like that. You ever see that movie Pleasantville? Uh, yeah, I saw it once. He, remember Don Knotts played like a cable guy that came and like fixed the TV at the beginning. And he gave him a magic remote that sucks him into the TV. Oh yeah, which is also kind of like the movie, uh, the Adam Sandler movie. What's that Adam Sandler? <laughs> What's that Adam Sandler movie called? Click. Click. And it has fucking 
wacky uh what's his nuts Christopher Walken gives him a magic remote too mm-hmm. but look who it is now the pedophile allegedly allegedly yeah he was never uh I don't know did he like plead guilty he pleaded no contest whatever that means <laughs> it means he can't put up a fight I don't know yeah. <laughs> I think no contest is isn't it something like that where I'm not pleading guilty but I acknowledge that I have no evidence that's gonna help my case right right yeah. I think it's basically what it is there must have been some good evidence that said he did it then but I mean I could see where there's other things there's certain cases where you're fucked you know it's like look I didn't do this but I'm going to get nailed. Like, there's nothing I could say that's going to help my situation right now. And I think pleading no contest, it, it, I think it does something to help you. I don't know. I don't fucking know anything about this law shit, man. I'm going to look him up, though. I'm going to see what, what happened. I'm going to see where he is. I bet you he's a lot fatter now. Yeah, he looks like shit. Stress eating. Tim Burton was offered to direct this film. Really? That would have been kind of neat. Because this would have been... He turned it down because he was doing. He was getting ready to do Batman Returns. Mm, okay, they just must have... This one must have been shelved for a little bit, or it just took a little time for him to get off the... Because this came out a year later. It says Batman Returns came out in 92. I know, this came out in 93, right? I think it's 92. Oh, my bad. Let's see here. Oh, there's a funny picture on Google. When I looked up Jeffrey Jones and somebody, there's just, I don't know what it's from. It's probably some website, but it's this like thumbnail that has them both merged together in the image. One of the, on the left side is Justin Bieber. And on the left side, they got like modern day Jeffrey Jones and they got a shot of him where it looks like he's on the fucking prowl. He <laughs> looks disgusting, man. He was in Howard the Duck. That's another good movie. Who was Jeffrey Jones? Jeffrey Jones. I say it's a good. I say it's a good movie, but most people hate that movie for some. He reason. really did get a lot of work, man. Back in those days. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Even even when he he went down for that nasty shit, the last thing he was in was Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. So he was still, you know, obviously getting work from Tim Burton, getting his table scraps. He's the guy to go to. He just. He's one. He was one of those guys. Like, oh, I've seen that guy. I don't know his name. No one cared about him like in any movie. He just character actor guy. I love this man. This is like one of the main things that comes up when you go to his Wikipedia page. Like, you don't even have to look into it. Like, you don't even have to scroll down to the tab and it says personal life mm-hmm. or controversy and click it. It's like on the main fucking summary. Anyway, it says in 2003, Jones pleaded no contest to a felony charge of soliciting a 14 year old boy to pose for nude photographs. Since then, he has appeared in two films and one television series. He's the devil in this movie. Is he really? The fucking ground just opened up and he drove in. I'm gonna look... I'm gonna look at what pleading no contest means because I want to, you know, talk with... I think you're right, yeah. Talk with a sense of education. No contest means you're conceding the charge without admitting guilt and without presenting a defense. But unlike a plea of guilty or innocent, a defendant must get a court's consent to plead no contest, which comes with a certain legal consequence. So it kind of sounds like he's basically settling. Yeah. It's like It sounds like he's gambling, right? Like you're at the casino and um, he, he bought the insurance on the blackjack table, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, do you know how to play blackjack? No. So that's what it's like. So basically, uh, obviously, if do you know the fundamentals of blackjack? I've never played it at all. It's a game of 21. So basically, the dealer has a card, you have a card, and the dealer draws based on what the dealer has. Basically, you want to get as close to 21 as possible without going over or you bust and you lose. And you're hoping that the dealer busts. If the dealer goes over 21 and you don't, then you automatically win. Oh, I'll make him bust. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, basically, when the dealer draws a certain type of card, which um, makes the odds heavily in their favor that they're going to have a blackjack, which is undefeatable, they will give you an opportunity in certain special circumstances to buy insurance, which basically is like, man, chances are I'm fucked. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the insurance so I don't lose the hand right Mm -hmm. altogether. So this is what it kind of sounds like. He's like, look, I'm fucked. They're going to get me. Um, I'm going to plead no contest and he probably, he's probably picking up trash on the side of the road. 
these TV shows they're watching are pretty funny because, like, since he's the devil, they're all like kind of hell inspired. Like, that. well, I saw. I think in the the memory that I had wasn't the Wayne's World like warped. Yeah, they're like dead. Didn't like Wayne Campbell have like yeah like? Did I miss that part? It's not up yet. It'll come later. But yeah, that one he was watching was st- uh, a sadistic a hidden camera or something like that. And like a cop went up to the old lady. It's like, I think I couldn't hear it now, but I think he's like, oh yeah, your husband died. And she started crying. He's like, you're on camera. <laughs> and he's just watching like, what the fuck? Who does that shit? See, it gets, it's, it's getting going real quick. Yeah, I can already tell this is a movie I would love, and I can already tell it's very quintessential early 90s, man. I'd love to... I haven't even seen much of this movie, and I still want to own a copy of it. I would buy this in a second. This does look like a kind of movie that Shout Factory would put out. Mm-hmm. It's just like the circus of time. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... Oh, no, a pedophile's in here with us. Speaking of, um, in relation to the whole Jeffrey Jones thing, um, I'm going to send you a picture, uh, look on, look on your phone, uh, about another guy related to that. That's similar. Check it out, man. Cause this is also in the news, obviously. (laughs) The old Skrill Cosby. Bill Cosby was accused of it. Drop the bib and the bop. No, uh, no, he was, he went to his retrial, he was found guilty. Oh, I thought, you're, I thought you were saying he also was touching kids. No, but he fucking was raving a bunch of fucking women. I mean, for years. But yeah, man, Bill Cosby, what, what a world we live in. It's like a bizarro world. Like, it's so crazy. Like, I, we live in a time in a world where Bill Cosby was found guilty and, and Donald Trump might win a peace prize. It is a funny world, dude. It's, it's f- that is funny. Okay, so Bill Cosby, back in the early 90s and the 80s, he was the picture of wholesomeness. Mm-hmm. Like, like if, if you were trying to um, tell me some bullshit or blow smoke up up my ass in like 1989 or 1993, and I would have came at you with something like, yeah. And Bill Cosby's a rapist. That would have been seen as like a a, 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 cl- a good comeback, right? Because it's like, see, if anybody ever, the next time somebody sets a comedy in the '80s, they need to put that line in there. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's like something you would have said or on mm-hmm. TV, like yeah, or you know, or like yeah, Mother Teresa is a whore. You know, Bill Cosby's not. But dude, we live in a time where Bill Cosby they they convict they were able to convict him on three charges. Obviously, there's a whole shit ton that he can't get nailed for. Um, but he got sentenced to 10 years for each one of them Mm -hmm. and the judge is going to let him serve him. They said, most likely the judge will let him Cause I don't think he's had official, I don't know, official sentencing, but, uh, they said most likely the judge, he, it's possible he can serve all three at the same time consecutively, but Mm -hmm. still 10 years, man, at his age, he could die in prison, man. And I don't know if maybe he'd get off on good behavior or what. But still, that's insane. We're going to have a, a world where we have Bill Cosby in fucking a, a orange jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. And yeah, Donald Trump, the peace, the Nobel Peace Prize, which is funny, man, because I think the whole thing with the uh, uh, the peace talks between North and South Korea, I think is pretty incredible. It is. It's pretty incredible. Um, I still think it's funny, though, that I don't. What took him so fucking long? Uh, no, I know. But. It is pretty incredible, and but it is it does I do, man. What? Why the fuck did all of a sudden Kim Jong Un just flip a switch? I don't know. Like went from threat. It's almost like I I don't know, man. It, it's like Donald Trump talked to a bully like a bully, and then all of a, and then the bu- the first bully had respect for him. Yeah, you know, it's like it, I don't know I don't know what it is, and he actually heard him out. It's like Kim Jong Un's like. Oh, you're a horrible guy, blah, 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 fucking dumbass, ha, ha. And then Donald Trump's like, oh, yeah, your mom's fat, ha, ha, blood types ragu. I respect you. All right. I'll, I'll hear you out. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Peace talks in North Korea and South Korea could all be thanks to a Twitter fucking slam war. That would be funny. 
fat jokes over fat jokes and your mama jokes over Twitter. A fat dude telling somebody else he's fat is pretty funny, man. I mean, he's just they're just he's officially nominated. Doesn't mean he's going to get it. And obviously the people that nominated him were kind of like his cronies, right? The Republicans. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't really know how it works. It's still funny though, man. And you know what? I hope he gets it because it's worth the fucking show. Because all this shit that he might it's it's a big deal, man. Like the first time in decades and decades that this is happening. It'll be funny too because it's just a couple days after dropping a bomb on Syria. It's <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's absurd. It's funny though. No, I'm saying the whole thing Hollywood isn't putting out better material than this, mm-hmm. right? What's going on in the news is way more entertaining. It is. It's just, it's very entertaining. And uh, like I said, I think it's... I, but they can't wait to make the movie after he's done being president. I was talking to Josh... Was I talk? Was it Josh James I was talking about that with? with? Maybe, yeah. Somebody was. I was like, man, I don't know if it's Josh James or not, but somebody, I was like, man, you know somebody's waiting to pull the trigger on that movie. They've already got... They're already working on it. They're already waiting on it. They know it's going to happen. My only question was, how long after his term ends that are they going to wait to put it out, Right. Like, how fast? Who's going to beat to the punch? They should put it out while he's still in office. You know that every studio wants to get a piece of that, right? I I would be too tempted to just make it completely stupid. Like, I would, of course, have him fuck his daughter at the end. He's got to get that. He's got to get the girl. (laughs) Who would play him? There There are porns where he's fucking his daughter. Interesting. Jeffrey Jones should play Trump. He kind of. I saw a porn where, uh, where I, like, Trump fucked his daughter or something. Or no, Trump fucked Obama's daughter. Oh, that's funny. And then showed Obama, and then Obama shows him a tape of him fucking Melania Trump. Melania's hot. Barack Obama got the better end of that deal. Let me tell you, his fucking daughters look just like them. Gross. You know, Melania Trump's she's a she's a piece. His, his daughter Ivanka is pretty hot. I didn't say Ivanka. I meant like the the Barack kids. I f- they got big foreheads. They look like they jumped out of the Duckman set. That's fine. I'm saying Melania is it, it really hot, and uh, yeah, his daughter's hot too, man. Jeez. Actually, how old is Barack Obama's daughters? I don't know. You said something horrible though. I was. I, was, I, was, I should probably cut that. I'll have to look. look. I'm going to save you. Hold on. I'm going to save you right now. Don't say anything. <laughs> Hold on. Um, Barack Obama daughters. See if I can save some face for you here. Oh, did I tell you that I fucking Polly Shore has his own YouTube channel? Uh, you will in a second. Hold on. Mal- Malia... <laughs> Mal- Malia Obama, she is 19. You are safe. Safe! And uh, she's six foot one. She is a tall drink of water, let me tell you. Okay, but you, guess what? I think the younger one, we have Sasha Obama. Hold on, you're not out of the clear yet. <laughs> Sasha Obama. Ooh, she's 16. <laughs> but that's legal in most states. I ought- I obviously meant the, the one that was of age. You said daughters. Hey, <laughs> A hey, uh, plural is is sixteen legal age in Illinois? I don't know. It it's it's it, sixteen is the legal age in most states. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it is. It is. A- eighteen is actually, believe it or not, the legal age of eighteen is is only I think in a handful of states, and it's the most liberal of all states. New York City eighteen, California eighteen, Arizona eighteen. Like they're super strict about that. But you go to all these other places and it's 16. It, I just always thought that was really weird. You'd think California. I remember hearing that the youngest was uh, fucking Iowa or something. Um, This is a fun topic, too. I'm going to look it up. I don't, I, I'm not trying to go out there and promote people like, oh, my God. Because there's some people out there that just assume it's 18 everywhere. I, I always I always do. What if we're informing people right now that like, oh, my God, I can fuck my 14-year-old cousin. <laughs> I, I I found out recently too that uh, you can fuck your cousin, and and the odds of the kid having like birth defects aren't that huge. 
It's about the same percentage as when a woman turns 40. No. Oh. Which, I never knew that. That's weird. So all you cousins fuck each other. So, so... Preferably with a condom, though. You don't want kids anyway. So there's, um... I got a map pull up here of, of North, Central, and South America. And it's all by color. And color-coded for the age of consent. Now... There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe twelve, or is that eleven states that are eighteen? That's it. Um, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is seventeen. Uh, one of those is. If you're gonna go younger, why just a year? We're gonna put special laws to just be a little bit younger. Illinois and Missouri are both seventeen, so you're still you're still a pervert because that other one was sixteen. Um, then s- everywhere else is like sixteen. All of Canada's sixteen. Fucking uh, the bo- most of the Bible Belt, Nebraska, and all these places are sixteen. Um, I think is that is that I think it's Utah. Utah sixteen. Um, and there's this little place down in fucking uh, South America. That is <laughs> puberty. That's all it is. Just as puberty. <laughs> so that can range from ten years old to from from for girls. It, I don't know. It's it's whatever country is right below um, Chile. I say Chile. Oh wait, my bad. My bad. This is Mexico. My fucking bad. This is a part of Mexico. Mexicano. I'm not surprised, man. I'm not we surprised. had this uh, Mexican restaurant here, and this hot fucking chick works there. Oh, I'm not surprised. She's hot as fuck. You've told you've talked about her before. Oh yeah. So, so and, and I suggest if if she's on your mind this much, why don't you go Mac on it? Because she's married to the guy that owns the place. Oh, I think you told me that too. Because I probably said the same thing last time. And he'd probably kick my ass and not let me eat there anymore. <laughs> oh, so how hot is she? She is hot as fuck. Like, is she a Illinois ten or is she a real ten? Like, based on anywhere. Anywhere, baby. Because, because you know, Illinois 10 is not the same as like a Southern California 10. You realize this, right? Of course. Nobody in California walks around looking like shit most of the time. So, so she's saying she could go toe to toe with like some of the hottest in like California. Toe to toe. Toe to toe. You should go for it anyway, man. Does she got big old jugs? Big old greasy hooters? They're nice titties. They're nice. I think you need to quit being a pussy. I think you need to quit being a pussy and just go for it. I I like eating there though. Slip her a note. Is she a waitress? She doesn't she doesn't speak very good English. That's fine. (laughs) Who cares? They don't need to talk anyway. So she wouldn't be able to read my note. Oh, well write it in Spanish, man. Google Translate. And then it'll like change words slightly and I'll be saying something completely different to her. Find her Instagram and slip in them DMs. You ever do that for fun? You ever do that for fun? You, you you write something and translate it to Spanish and then translate it back to English? No. To see how accurate it's never the same. Nope. Memorex. Find her uh, Instagram and slip in them DMs. Okay, you pushy fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to steal someone's wife. I just want you to be happy, Zach. <laughs> Max Hell. That Max Well, supposed to be Max Well? Or I'm, I don't know. I thought it was called Memorex. Oh, Dan um, Aykroyd was originally asked to do the main character. I, I can see that. I think Ritter's the better guy here. Ritter is the man. I've never seen... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if Dan Aykroyd's ever carried a movie by himself. <laughs> I don't think so. Like he's always been he's always been a co-star. He yeah. uh, it's like I'm not saying he's not a leading man, but he's always a leading man with someone else. Mhm. Whether it be like Great Outdoors and shit like that and Ghostbusters. But Are they going to find the uh, thing monster? Yeah, this is how they go to different channels. They find the the fucking the white noise static. This is like the game Gex, man. Do you remember that game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where he's like in the TV world. Mm-hmm. There's like all the static and he goes to the different... Uh, like They ripped that off? Like there's the... Uh, well, that came after this game. 
No, Gex came after. Like, there's the, the I think the first level in the game, if I'm not incorrect, is the uh, cemetery. So he's like in a monster movie. Mm-hmm. And then another game that actually predates De- Gex that Gex copied that maybe copied this movie was the uh, the Garfield Sega Genesis game. Mm-hmm. You remember that game? Yeah. For a while, they packaged Sega Genesis uh, systems with that game, like in the last run of the system. But yeah, that's the same thing where he's got a remote. He's got a remote and he gets sucked in the TV and he's playing like a black and white, black and white noir like level, um, you know, and there's a Halloween horror movie level and blah, blah, blah. It looks like fucking Mike Myers and uh, Dana Carvey were offered cameos as Dwayne and Garf on Dwayne's Underworld, but they passed because they were busy with production on Wayne's World, the movie. Oh, so they didn't play him? No. It was different people? Mm-hmm. Oh, did I miss that part already? No, it's not here yet. Okay, so I never even realized that. I just always remembered it being actually Wayne. I didn't either. As a kid. That just kind of sucks. I thought it was like a legit cameo. They should have fucking just went for a day and did it. Or just sent them some footage. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just like on TV. Hey, they should have got Macaulay Culkin to play this little bitch. I mean, he was playing everything in 92. Mm-hmm. Man, this is a... I love doing these 90s movies, man. And this makes me want to do... Um, God, what's the other fucking movie I was just thinking about? I lost it. Honey, I blew up the kid. No. No, no. Well, that one too, but... That's no, there's another... One. What was... Damn it, I was literally just... We were just... Were we just talking about it? I don't know. I can't fucking remember, man, but... I love these fucking 90s movies, and we gotta do more. I'm gonna think about it. Another movie I think we should do, um... Sandlot. I got that, yeah. I, I just bought the 25th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Blu-ray. It's on sale, everybody, for six bucks at, at Forever. Best Buy. Best Buy, six bucks. Does it come with a digital copy? Um, I don't know. Probably does, because I bought mine a couple of years ago, and it didn't, and it probably cost more. It didn't. It didn't come with the other one. The one I got. I got the one that has like the slip cover that feels like a baseball. Yeah, this one has a slip cover too. I actually like the one you have better. I like yeah. that slip cover better. Um, and I remember I regretted not getting that. I remember that was on sale for like ten bucks, and I didn't get it for some reason. Then I couldn't find it with the slip cover again. Then I saw they released the twenty fifth anniversary. I'm like, cool. And I went to Best Buy, and it had a slip cover. Not as cool a one, but it's still a slip cover, and it was only six bucks. So it's on sale right now this week. Um, I don't know what else did I. Um, I did acquire some Blu rays, some more Blu rays recently, and I know there's some uh, voodoo's I need to get in the box. Mm-hmm. I got a fifth element today. I've never seen that movie. Ah, uh, it's a classic, man. It's classic uh, 90s. So put it in there, bitch. Yeah. Um, oh, I got I, I got to put in my RoboCop unrated. That's Voodoo. a good one. We should do that. It is a good one. I got a whole stack I need to put in here. But you know what? We need to figure out the rules of Voodoo because we don't get it because some things... Sometimes shit isn't available. I don't know why. What is it that Mac put in the voodoo and none of us can... Oh, no. I did. Or did I put in... He got the stuff, too, he said. And I don't oh, see it. Oh. And, yeah, it never it never populated for us. And I got Curb Your Enthusiasm, the new season, and it's not in there for you guys. And we don't have each other's ashes, so we bought for yeah. Evil Deads. You fucking talked me into buying that shit again, and I didn't even get it. I, d- I never would have guessed that it wouldn't. Because we wanted <laughs> to get it just to show them, for them to see it. At least I got the better one. Yeah, Yeah, it's like, so you can't say I didn't fucking support that show. I never had stars, but I bought that bitch on Blu-ray and on fucking Voodoo. Mm-hmm. And I heard, like, the fucking the Blu-ray sales didn't really, like, have much factor to, like, do with convincing them whether or not they were going to greenlight another season. Because they want people to watch it live. It's like, yeah, cause, that's just not going to happen anymore. That's not how TV works now. So h- how do um how do these networks like, okay, so obviously Stars and HBOs, they're not like normal stations where they want you to watch it live 
because they run off ads. There's no commercials, right? So they don't get their money from ads. They must get their money from subscriptions. So they want people to download their channel. They want people to pay for their apps and they want people to uh, pay to have their channel on their cable uh, package. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's ultimately what they want. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, yeah, they're getting revenue and shit from Blu-rays and stuff, but um, who's to say how much and if it's worth it to them, right? Because they would rather someone have the channel and be paying five bucks a month instead of just dropping 20 bucks on a Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was the wrong platform from that show from day one. Fucking Netflix, you assholes. You cock stains. You fucking cock stains. So where are they at right now? Like I said, are they, uh, is this the set of the thing? Maybe. Oh man, I got so many movies I'm backed up on, but I, I don't know what I'm going to watch next. What did I watch? I want, I can't even remember what, when I watch movies, I can't remember when I watch them. I usually, I literally make a pile. I took all my movies out and I made a pile of all the ones I've yet to watch. And I'm just like taking them and putting them in a finished pile. I think the next one I'm going to watch is the, um, the Killer Clowns, because I really want to see how good that transfer is. I heard it looks great, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm all about special features for that movie. I almost bought... The reason why I went to Best Buy today is because they actually have on sale. <sighs> I don't really like the movie, but they have Land of the Dead, the Screen Factory uh, special edition on sale for 15 bucks. Mm. and I was thinking about it. I've never seen that whole movie. It's Here's the thing. It's not... It's not good, but it's not bad either. That's what I always hear, yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, I think Todd really shits on it, and I... It's not a bad movie, but it's not a great movie. It's just kind of there. Every now in a blue moon, I feel like giving it another chance. Like, I kind of forget. Like, oh, you know, maybe I was just hard on it. Maybe it's a, a grower. Let me put it on, and I get a hankering to watch it, and then I put it in, and I'm like, yeah, it kind of still leaves me unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. But I but I finish it, and it's, it's weird, because I like... John Leguizamo, I like, for what it's worth, I like Dennis Hopper. He's kind of weird in that role, but it's got things going for it. And when they do have gore, it is good. But the movie itself doesn't feel like a horror movie at all. Mm -hmm. Dawn of the Dead doesn't really either, though. Well, how does that movie feel to you? It feels more like an adventure movie to me. Mm. I, I don't know. It's it it's got problems, but but I would I like I said I'd almost want to get it for the special features alone because I am interested in like featurettes and anything or commentaries. Um, I I thought it was so cool when they put uh, Edgar Wright and Sean, what's his Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg in the cameos on uh, Land of the Dead. Yeah, they have cameos. I didn't see it. They play zombies. Yeah, they, they there's a scene where they kind of um. Go into this like. Has it been that fucking long since uh, since fucking Shaun of the Dead and <laughs> Land of the Dead came out? Yeah, and that and so obviously I think which is funny because I've seen Shaun of the Dead way more. I've actually seen that movie all the way through. I've seen Shaun of the Dead so many times, and it seems like that movie's older than <laughs> or younger. I mean, Shaun of the Dead I believe is two thousand four. Land of the Dead might be two thousand five. Hmm. It came after. Regardless, uh, even though there's a featurette on YouTube you could find where they're taught where they um, are interviewing Sean, sorry, fuck, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, and they're fanboying hard, like, oh, that they got asked to be in this movie, and they they love the, obviously, Shaun of the Dead was inspired, you know, by Romero, mm -hmm. and they're just geeking out the whole time they're on set. Nowadays, if Land of the Dead came out today, I think they would be a little too busy to fucking do a pop up on his movie, you know, because they're. Mm -hmm obviously more prolific now yeah but back then they were just the guys that just created Shaun of the dead last year and had all this buzz and people you know talking about it and uh you know and george romero loved it but it's yeah, it's kind of neat which is weird because george romero was always outspoken about not liking funny zombies yeah it is weird no yeah i remember that too i think he just hated fucking return of the living dead because it was his partner that went on to create that yeah the partner that kind of fucked him but if you watch the movie, you can't miss them. They go to this like nightclub, and they're almost like um, 
they're entertainment. The zombies are entertainment. They have these two zombies that are in these neck chain collars chained to a wall. Mm-hmm. And they're they're using them as entertainment. And there's two of them, and one's Edgar Wright, and the other one's Simon Pegg. And Simon Pegg is literally dressed like Sean from Shaun of the Dead, I believe. He's got the tie mm-hmm. and the whole thing. He's got his hair, you know. So it's interesting. Am I watching Roger Rabbit now? Yeah, they're on a cartoon. And remember, this is the 90s, so MTV still showed music videos. So they're going to end up in a music video also. You want to know who, whose music video it is? Um, let me guess. Think 90s. Think 90s, MC Hammer. <laughs> You're close. Vanilla Ice. Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper. You should let me keep guessing. <laughs> do, 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 do. Vanilla Ice would have been terrible. <laughs> yeah, he was already in T2, man. You can't have like a whole like uh, monopoly on these movies. Holy shit, was he in T2? I don't even remember him. Tur- uh, Turtles 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, that had been awful. I would have lost some respect for Jam- James Cameron really throwing his dignity out of the window. When they like re released it, they would have taken the scene out. <laughs> No one wants to see this fuck. From what I heard, I was listening to a podcast um, today, uh, this podcast I follow, and the whole episode was on Turtles, like Ninja Turtles just as a franchise, and the way they described it was, with Vanilla Ice being in the second movie, they were like, the thing is, is this is how, they're like, this is how fast Vanilla Ice became unpopular. It's like, by the time the movie actually hit theaters... The whole Vanilla Ice thing was dated. Was <laughs> like his his time had passed. Yeah, and it was kind of it was kind of weird. They probably originally planned for a, a more prolific person to be there, but that's all they could get. I'm sure. I'm sure when they were filming it and they hired Vanilla Ice to be in it, he was still kind of relevant. It was probably towards the end of his little 15 minutes, you know, and he was still something. Mm-hmm. But by the time the movie came out, God knows, maybe a year later, it's like this guy's fucking washed up. It's funny. <laughs> He did a song with ICP. <laughs> he did. He, everybody did a song with ICP. I'm convinced. Every time we do a fucking commentary, you're like, Snoop Dogg did a song with ICP, and <laughs> Slash did a song with ICP. It's about racism. He liked the message, and now Vanilla Ice too. <laughs> he sounded like Corey G. <laughs> you could do the Corey G better than me. Did Eminem? Kid Rock did. Kid, Ro- and you say Kid Rock too, right? Kid Rock, yeah. You've you've literally gone through almost everybody. I know you tell me all these. He did a song with ICP. Ice T. Ice T did one. Yeah. What? Dude, you could almost you could honestly do the whole six degrees of Kevin DeBacon with ICP. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's somehow done a recording with ICP. I don't know how we pass up the chance to do their uh, their uh, fucking you know cowboy movie when it was on Prime. Big Money Hustlers. Big Money Rustlers. Big Money Rustlers. Well, you know, na- well, back then, I wasn't in on the joke, man. I just like, no, I'm not fucking doing that movie. Now I would, just for shits. <laughs> it, is it a pro? You sure it's not on Netflix? It was on Prime. I don't know if it still is. I don't think I ever saw it on Prime. I was seeing it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what fucking, what was the sitcom that John Ritter was on? You think they'll actually break the third wall? And have him show up on set. Oh, are you foreshadowing? I- I'm asking you. You think that would happen? You think that was something they would do? Yeah. Three's company? I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so is it going to have a cameo from fucking Chrissy and all them? You'll see. You'll see. Did you ever watch Eight Simple Rules? I never did. That was the show he was doing when he died, wasn't it? That's correct. And when he died, they replaced his character with two characters. When he died, they wrote his character off as dying. And it took two characters to equal one John Ritter. They cast James Gardner and David Spade. David Spade. David Spade has become this weird sitcom cancer that just keeps popping up and growing in all these sitcoms. Like, he was in Eight Simple Rules, and then he had that... uh, What's that show with David Putty? Yeah, what was that? I don't even fucking know, but it was on for years, and I can't even think it was called. And the blonde chick was pretty hot on there. Yeah, she was the chick from... Wasn't she the chick from Two Guys and a Girl in the Pizza Place back in the day? Maybe she was on uh, Grounded for Life, which was a show I loved. 
Grounded for Life. I remember that. Different Strokes. Did you see that? My three sons of bitches. Oh, that's funny. Dwayne's World. Here it is. Dwayne. That actually looks even better. <laughs> this is like that scene from New Nightmare. Dwayne. Remember your brother, Dwayne? <laughs> we used to get caught stealing donuts. They're not bad impressions. Yeah, they are. It doesn't sound anything like like Wayne Campbell. I'm who wonder who plays this at. Who's the actor who plays him? It's it's not bad. Sphincter, Sphincter boy. boy. <laughs> See, they couldn't have just shot it and sent it to him because he's actually in it. Well, what if they offered John? What if they offered John uh, Ritter to fly down? They already had the set for the movie, right? That they were filming at the time. Like, look, man, let's just hop in your set. John will fly down, and you'll do a really quick one. I mean, I get it. This is probably like. It's probably a good portion of their day just doing this scene, though, so I can understand. Mm -hmm. Not to mention they had a bona fide hit on their hands. They didn't need this because they were doing Wayne's World 2, right? Wait, uh, the first movie. Oh, it was the first movie at the time? So it was just an SNL skit at this point. Uh, it would have been kind of weird, though. I can kind of. It wouldn't be kind of weird if they had. Uh, they would have appeared in two movies at the same time, like their own movie and then a cameo in this one. They're talking about his wife in that book. Extreme close up. Whoa, dude! Like basically, uh, Wayne and Garth, they were doing the. Uh, this is the podcasting of the '90s, right? Public access shows. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom Green had a public access show. Um, uh, there was another. Who was it? Um, Fuck, I can't remember. There's a YouTuber that I would watch that started out as a public access TV show back in the 90s, and he moved to YouTube or whatever. But, um, yeah, I wonder if today, I wonder if in the 90s we would be doing a public access TV show, or would the inconvenience of actually doing that prevent us from doing what we're doing now? Is it the is it the ease of having a podcast the main reason why we do it? Yeah, we probably wouldn't be able to. Like you think people would watch TV to listen to guys watch a movie? I never used to watch those shows. I'd pass by them on like a public show. Like, oh fuck this. They were never interesting looking though. It was always like, oh my cooking show. They were always cheap. No, I just watch these guys with public access shows and it'd be like in their room or whatever and they'd be talking about whatever. Yeah, sometimes you're on uh like where I live, I never had something like that. Like the public access shit was just lame shit, like cooking shows and stuff, but I remember like seeing shit on YouTube that was originally on public access, and I was like, I would fucking watch this. Yeah, I used to watch. There was this guy's. There's this. Remember that that crazy lady that was like, she will suck a dick up till she hick up. That was from a public access. <laughs> yeah, I remember this one show with these two uh, stoner dudes. Like they were. They might have been in their early 20s. They kind of looked like they were in their teens, though. And I remember they would kind of review new movies. <laughs> and it was all shitty looking like Wayne's World and the whole thing. And um, like I said, the classic game room, this guy that has a YouTube channel or did, he started out. He's kind of an OG. He's older, but he had a he had a public access show and it was uh, video games and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you remember those shows? Those after on PBS, they'd be like local, and it was like homework helpline. Vaguely, I think I saw something like Dude. that. Yeah. Okay, so like clockwork. After high school, we get off of high school, and we met Riverman and I would go to our friend Travis's house because he lived right by the high school, and so we'd get there uh, around three thirty or four. And even when he, Travis wasn't home, like me and Todd would just go in his house, raid his fridge and shit. Nobody be home. <laughs> that's that's how close we all were. Uh, and we'd sit down on his fucking couch and we'd turn on the TV and it, it never failed. The time of day that we got there after school, there'd be this public access show, Homework Helpline, and it would have like a teacher in the center and he'd have a board and it would have like eight students, four on each side, answering phones, right? <laughs> and basically, if you were having trouble with your math homework, these were like little kids, by the way. These were like kids that were like 10 and 9, 10 years old. And you could call up they would take your call and they would present the question to the teacher and he would work it out for you on TV. 
Mm. I used to fucking prank call that show all the time. Really? It was cool. It was live. So I, I would sit there and call it, and you can watch them on TV answer your phone call. <laughs> and then you'd be saying some like perverted shit. And I used to. I used to say like perverted shit and fucked up shit. And literally, they would look so awkward on TV. Like they didn't know what to do. And they'd be trying to get somebody's attention off screen. Like, I don't know what the fuck I can do with this guy. What? <laughs> what? I can't remember any of the shit I said, though. But I used to. Do you ever record it while you're doing it? No, we weren't that smart. We should have. Oh, this is this dude. This if we would have recorded it, we would have needed like a big ass fucking camcorder. Like this is two thousand and fucking one, two thousand. No VCR. Long time ago. Yeah, it was, it was a big hat. It's not like today, man, where we have fucking iPhones. Oh, I would have a field day. But anyway, it'd be funny because I remember I I called up one time and I just did like a like some kind of demonic voice or whatever, and I I was saying some weird fucked up shit about his parents that I didn't even know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like this kid looked mortified. <laughs> TV, um, and eventually they hang up, and I'd see him hang up, and I'd call back, and I'd call back, like, "Don't you fucking hang up on me, you son of a bitch!" Again, <laughs> do, they, do they not have screeners? No, I don't know, but it wasn't my phone. It was my house. Did they have anybody that talked to you first to make sure? Like, nope. You had nope. no, no. You, you, there's like I said, there was four kids on each side of the room. They each they they had like phones, and they were all on phones at the same time. Like you know, you ever watch those people that like prank call C-SPAN? No, any of those videos? No. There was one where some guys like, yeah, I just want to know, uh, you know, how many times have you had sex? And the guys like, I'm not. This is like, this is part of a compilation where everybody just kind of gets pranked and then hangs up real fast. But this guy actually entertains them, and goes along with. It. He's like, I can't talk about that. And the guy goes, Come on, tell me how many times you've been fucked. <laughs> he hangs up on. Him. Has he been fucked? Is a guy? <laughs> yeah, the guy. The guy on the phone said that to the guy. That's funny, man. Yeah, I don't think they have stuff like that anymore, though. Like, they probably realize, man, there's a lot of people fucking prank calling these kids. People do screen them now, but people just act like they have a real question until they get on the air, and then they prank them anyway. Yeah, no, dude, this this show, it was too good. It's like you could literally watch the kid on the TV pick up the phone and talk to you, and you'd see, like, okay, that's the one I'm talking to. And then you'd see, even if you couldn't, like, read his lips and know that he was talking to you, man, once he started making the fucking weird expressions and he's trying to, like, look at some adults, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. You knew which kid you were talking to. <laughs> she is hot, baby. Dude, if, if they still had that these days, um, we'd be making YouTube videos of that because we'd have the capture recording of the TV and then us calling. Mm-hmm. And it'd be public access, so I don't think anybody would take it down. Yeah, That'd be great. I am nobody's doormat. Okay, are they like in a Casablanca type thing? It's like a film noir because uh, he's the private eye. Okay, well, that's kind of like Casablanca then. Never seen it. Isn't that like three hours? Eh, it's long. I almost watched it once and I realized it was three hours. I was like, fuck that. Are you big on watching black and white movies? Yeah, I just wasn't in the mood at the time. And then, of course, whenever you are in the mood, it's not on Amazon Prime anymore. Have you ever gone through a phase where you're obsessed with like old movies? Yeah. Do you do you get the same kind of enjoyment from like a really old movie? Uh, depends, baby. Like, you mean like silent movies? Not silent movies, but like can you can you does the age of a movie and the era of a movie, um, does it at all affect your enjoyment of it? No. It doesn't play a hindrance on there at all. Uh-uh. So do you uh, do you think the acting in old, like, 40s and 50s movies is charming? Because the acting was different back then. Yeah, it was more like stage play acting. It was more like stage play acting. It wasn't natural like it is today. She's hot, baby. Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I love that movie. Dude, we should do a commentary of Wizard of Oz. We could. That'd be fun. I saw somebody uploaded that to YouTube with fucking uh, the Pink Floyd music over it. What's the album that they're like, oh yeah. Dark you, Side. Dark you, Side of the you Moon. You can sync it and it, it fits perfect. Does it fit perfect? Probably not. Dark Side of the Moon. Does it fit perfect? I've never watched it with it. I heard you're supposed to start the album on the third lion's roar. Or the MGM lion or something like that. 
I, I, I have no idea. I don't know how perfect it is or whatever. I just don't think any band could have really did that that perfectly. It has to be a coincidence, yeah. Well, I'm not saying... I'm not saying it it couldn't be somewhat planned, but for it to be as perfectly placed as everybody's saying it is, I hear that once money starts, that's when the Technicolor comes in. Yeah. Like, I could see that being perfect, but, like, everything being perfect, you know, like, come on. I don't know, man. It's fun to let let people believe stuff. It's fun. I would show them. I'd be like, I gotta look at these. I, I'd be like, would you fuck Ritter would, and drag? Would you fuck Ritter and drag? Probably, but in that situation, I'd be like, I gotta fuck Mindy with tits. Okay, so we're gonna less out. Seriously, Zach, this is a very serious question. I don't want a troll answer. I want a very, very legit uh, response. If it meant saving John Ritter's life, which we know is a very sore subject, you had to fuck him in his cornhole. Would you do it? Why would that save his life? Let's just say, let's just say that that's what did it. Let's just say, look, the power. If I could save someone's life by doing that, probably I probably would, even if I didn't know him. I'm just saying, like, look, you. I, I get know, to like, come, and they get to live. It's fine. <laughs> John Ritter, I think he died abruptly, but let's just say they knew what was gonna g- gonna cause him to go, and they said, look, our research research our research indicates that. The semen, the load of Zach will save you. It cures what ails you. And you had to fuck him in his cornhole and you had to fucking come down that tailpipe. <laughs> and and it was and it couldn't just be any. You had to like do it aggressively. You had to fucking pull his hair and treat him like a your fucking whore. And it's like how, look how are you gonna talk about the late great John Riddle like this? It's like you it's like look. You don't realize this, but it's for your own good. Like, I'm saving your life. I, I know you're going to hate me because I'm going to put stitches in your ass, basically. <laughs> I probably wouldn't. I'm not that big. It's like my pinky. It's like my pinky. But that was good, though. No, but you, you actually went above and beyond and, and gave an extra credit answer. You said it doesn't have to be John Ritter. It'd be anybody. Why not? Unless I thought somebody was lying. Like, I, you mean... <laughs> I think you're lying to me. I'm going to fuck this guy. You're going to say he's still dead. Can I see a doctor's note, please? <laughs> like you wait till after to get the doctor's note. <laughs> so like it could just be. Uh... Now he's still dead and you're a fucking necrophiliac and you're probably going to go to jail. That's <laughs> funny. What do you think? Like. How, when was when do you think the first time that happened was and who do you think it was like somebody's dead somebody's there with them they're like you know I could fuck that and they won't know oh the first time someone fucked a dead body <laughs> yeah what goes through someone's mind to do that dude I can't even like just thinking about it disgust me but I'm trying to think <laughs> maybe it was one of those things maybe some asshole fucking tricked them and said that they'll come back if you fuck them. Like some Neanderthal caveman that they could be fooled back when they <laughs> thought the earth was flat. <laughs> like, do you, you can bring back from death by giving them what makes life your cum. Do it. Thag, fuck, dead body. Thag, bring back to life. <laughs> Farg hungry, Farg want to eat. <laughs> um... Yeah, I man, I don't know. But can you imagine, like, a body that the rigor mortis set in all the way, and you're, like, trying to, like, spread those legs? Like, would they even move? You'd have to lay them on their stomach so that the, the blood would go to the, that region of their body. So it what if, feels good. What if, <laughs> You've done your research. <laughs> I just guessed that. What if, like, that was just your thing, but you didn't really know too much about, like, biology, and you fucked it? You're like, oh, well, if I want to fuck a corpse, I got to fuck a fresh corpse so it's not all, like, you know rigor mortified and all that stuff but you don't but you fuck the corpse too soon before it releases its bowels and you see you let you go right in the fucking ass and it's just like Bleh. <laughs> i always thought it was funny man like it, i'm liking her titties in that top i'm liking the mindy titties ritter's titties are pretty nice too <laughs> he ain't got no cleavage though or does he no. No, he's wearing a shirt. Yeah, they clearly hit his. You would be able to see the prosthetics. I like that. I knew that. What were you going to say? 
I don't even remember. I don't remember. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> oh, you did that movie, too. Yeah. Cat? Catman Blue. Catatonic. <laughs> Cat Blue. Yeah, it was Cat Cat Blue, Catatonic. Then maybe it was Catman Do. I don't know what they said. <laughs> I remember when that movie came out, and I was a little shit. I was a little kid. I was probably like in the... What year did it come out? 94? Uh, yeah. So I was probably like eight years old. So I would have been in, uh, I don't know, man, what, fourth grade, third grade? I don't mm-hmm. know how old you are. But I remember going to my brother, who's younger than me. He had like this little friend that lived in the street and uh, him and his sister. And I remember going to their house and they were younger. They were like in kindergarten. And I remember they were talking about like, oh, yeah, we saw Casper last night. I'm like, oh, I, yeah, I haven't seen it. And this fucking little ginger nut kid just couldn't believe it. I'll never forget his expression. You haven't seen Casper? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm a fucking kid. I don't have money. I didn't go see Casper. <laughs> like, you expect me to just get my parents to take that me. That could also, Casper could be part of our Dow exploitation. The Dow exploitation. Splo- Speaking of my Dow exploitation, I watched <laughs> Life... I watched, <laughs> I watched Life on the Line, that fucking John Travolta movie Rivers talking about all the time. Was it good? And Devin Saw was in it. <laughs> and I had no idea, because Devin Saw was also in that new Fred Durst movie with John Travolta. They're working together a lot these days. I guess, well, cause yeah, the Fred Durst movie, De- Devin Sawa plays the main guy and uh, the, the, the action star that John Travolta is obsessed with. But yeah, mm-hmm. in, this, in Life on the Line, Devin Saw was kind of like... They should the, have cast Devin Sawa to play that fucking part and he could have just been reprising his role as Stan and cast yeah. Eminem you get it because he played yeah. Stan in the music video yeah no I, I I remember I actually didn't realize that was him until you told me like a couple days ago <laughs> I think you shared me like a screenshot of a tweet he sent out oh yeah so where are they at now Another TV show. Wonder if these were actually other TV shows that we just don't recognize because we we don't remember the shows that were on at the time. Mm, yeah, because like all I recognize is Wayne's World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but is this really a TV show? This is more like just a period piece. For, same thing with like the noir thing. They just seem like movie genres, you know? Yeah. This is a cool idea for a movie, though. Mm-hmm. You'd think a movie like this would be a pain in the ass to make with all the different set pieces. <laughs> different, you know. Mm-hmm. Different sets and stuff. Different sets, different, uh, you know, costumes. And- they probably just use sets from, uh, you know, like whenever they work in a studio, there's multiple sets, so they probably just use some of them. Probably. If you, you've never been to California, so, but yeah, if you go to like Universal Studios, you go to the Universal lot, they'll take you on the tour mm-hmm. of the filming lot. And it literally is like that. Like they'll have all these, it's like a fake neighborhood and one, one block will be, it'll look like um, New York City circa the Godfather, right? Like from like, or the Godfather to like the flash, it'll be like old New York, mm-hmm. like old New York from like 70 years ago. Uh, but then you look to your right. And it's like, oh, now this one's supposed to look like fucking, you know, a totally different city. We should we we should make another uh, meetup for next year and go to California. Oh, uh, what's in California? My buddy Lucas. Well, why don't you? I can meet up with them. So what? What's this Lucas guy got to do with me, man? I'm gonna use you and the rest of the guys to go there. But. <laughs> how, how do how do you use us? Like <laughs> you could, you would get you would still leave from your destination. You would still leave from. I know. I just I just figured we could make another thing out of it. Who's this Lucas guy? Give me the briefing. He's a friend of me and Mac. Oh yeah, why is he so cool? Sell me on this Lucas guy. He, is this the guy? Did he get did he get exiled to California because he fucked his sister and jerked off a dog? No, is this the guy? He's he's in jail, dude. Oh, okay. Good. I don't know if he is still in jail, actually. He probably still lives here where I live. That's so funny. He can find out I told that story and and fucking kill me in my sleep. (laughs) 
He'd probably fuck you in your sleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what has he got to lose, man? He's done it all. He's about as kinky as it gets. Dude, like, I can't. I still can't fucking believe that. <laughs> like, okay, Zach, I'm going to ask you a question right now. That is pretty tops. That's so fucking bad. Would you rather get your dick sucked by an old homeless veteran man with no teeth or would you rather fuck your sister? Which which one could you live with yourself quicker, easier? The homeless guy, man. <laughs> the, the homeless, the homeless veteran, but the homeless bum. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he's a veteran. That would feel terrible. <laughs> you fought for the right to suck this dick. That would be terrible. But I'd rather do that. <laughs> would you give him a salute while he's doing while you're nothing? <laughs> so. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you'd rather get your dick sucked, just your just your dick sucked by like a homeless man, than fuck your sister in the giny, as you put it. <laughs> like that guy, I don't know how he lives with himself. He probably pretends it didn't happen. That never happened. That was a Keanu Reeves movie again. I'd be seeking recall out to get a lobotomy. Like, please lobotomize me. <laughs> Do you think that we're ever gonna have? Uh, medical science advanced enough to where people can uh, do select lobotomy, like literally not fuck you up, but remove whatever it is you want removed. It could happen, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, look, guy, look, Doc. Um, I just want this particular memory or this period of my life gone. I don't know though, because if they did something to your brain, it could wipe more stuff out than you wanted. Well, there'd be a lot of trial and error. Like, yeah. it would be, they would take a lot of guinea pigs. Because mm -hmm. they would fuck up so much. We're going to have to practice on animals. Like, I kicked this monkey in the balls, and now I'm going to make him forget <laughs> about it. Okay, monkey, do you remember when I kicked you in the balls? Oh, fuck, he can't talk. We got to practice on humans now. No, they would get, like, poor people. Once they're done giving plasma, it's like, hey, I'll donate my uh, brain to science. I don't know. That'd be weird. Can they do a Yank to Love be able to do, like, a brain transplant? I don't know. I heard they just did the, the world's first penis transplant recently. Penis transplant? Yeah. So that means if you're an organ donor, they might cut your dick off. But give it to somebody else. <laughs> but is it just the penis? Just the All I hope is that whoever gets my dick fucks a lot of hoes with it. Is it just the shaft, though, or the testes, too? I don't know. Because what if you had like a really big base and you had this little fucking dick? <laughs> you know, really big nuts. Um, it's probably more. It's probably not for people that want a bigger dick. It's probably for like people that lose their dick, the cancer. That'd be so weird. Like having, could you get used to jerking off someone else's dick? I'd have to because it feels too good not to. Wouldn't that? Wouldn't that? Isn't that weird though? That you could, what if you would feel it? Will it like somehow connect to your nerves and you'd feel it? I, yeah, I guess. Isn't if, that weird? If they couldn't do that, there'd be no reason to transplant a dick. You just have a strap on. Just put a strap on on that. I mean, well, I guess when you lose a finger and they can reattach it, and and it you you can still feel on the finger when it's when it's all healed, right? Mm hmm. They have to connect all those nerves and stuff. Yeah. Really? I mean, they might not get them all. There might be a spot where, like, oh, if you touch this spot, it's numb. I can't feel anything. Wow. Yeah, and like, how do you reattach a penis? Because it's when it's when it's cut off, man. There's no blood. It's gonna be all shriveled. Yeah, who was that? Uh, Lo Lorraine Lebobbit cut off her husband's dick. Yeah, and they found it fast enough and reattached it, and then he went on to do porn. He went on to do porn. Yeah, <laughs> I need to find a video of him. <laughs> That's fucking weird, man. It just has another big cut right down the middle of it. She cut it vertically. Ow. <sighs> I don't know. That's fucking gnarly. What did she cut it with? I don't know. Cause she had to have gotten something strong enough to just like take it out quick enough before he woke up and like choked her out. Yeah. You know. Oh, dude, that would fucking suck. I can't whistle for shit. <laughs> Did you hear that new old fucking Guns N' Roses song? Yeah, Shadow of Shadow. Isn't that that's, weird? That's it's been a, around forever, it's, though. It's almost like, I've never heard it. It's almost like going into an alternate universe where there were different songs recorded for an album that you didn't hear. 
It's weird. That out that dead song's been kicked around though, like like hardcore fans that are there. I don't think there's anything on that big collection that they're putting out that anniversary edition that hardcore fans haven't like heard, mm-hmm. like on the bootleg circuit and stuff. I never heard it. Do you think Appetite of Destruction is a better album than Use Your Illusion? Um, I, I'm with the majority of people that think both Use Your Illusion albums are cluttered and like between the two of them you can if you pluck out about half of each one and you put them together there's a really great album there right they did make a a compilation version of it like that they did where it's got the split in half cover yeah Um, i think i think if you were to condense appetite for destruction into one album with the best of the best on there then yeah it might it might give uh appetite a run for the money Use your illusion, you mean? What did I say? I think you said appetite both times. Okay, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know, though. But the thing is, is I like these user illusion albums. Even, even like, the, the kind of filler track. Like, it's not it's not so much that I can't listen to the tracks on there, but there's clearly the songs that are not as good as the strongest songs, right? You um, want to step into my world. That song needs to go. <laughs> That's a horrible song. <laughs> but there's a lot of strong shit on those albums. I I personally like the um, the Appetite albums. No fuck, the Use Your Illusion albums better. I wonder why they don't put out put it out with the original cover. That was too bad to use in the oh the original uh, Appetite. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's on the inside. It's on the book. Like you can always see the cover on the inside. Mm-hmm. It, it's mild by today's standards. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Now we live in the PC world where you can't show a chick that had just been raped by a robot or whatever. Where but was that? It's the cover. Oh yeah, I thought you're. I thought that was another thing that happened recently. I was like, it's like art imitating life or life imitating. No, anyway, so I like to use your illusion albums, but I do acknowledge that Appetite for Destruction is as solid as it is. Right, just one album and just from front to back. But I don't think uh, Appetite for Destruction is a perfect album. I don't either. I I think I like Illusions better. There, like, there's. There's like maybe one or two of the tracks that aren't quite on the ten scale. Like I acknowledge that most of the songs are fucking almost ace. Like for what the, for just a rock and roll album, there's a couple that aren't quite up to snuff, but it's really good. And the Appetite albums are bloated, but you know, like Locomotive's kind of a all right. That's there. Get in the ring is like all right. Let's get through this shit. Um, but there's enough good shit in there. Get in the ring. Come on, Hip Raider, Midwalk, Craig. What you bad because your dad gets more pussy than you? I That's, like. Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't even look like the set, does it? It looks a little smaller, the table. Yeah. Is that really her? <laughs> I couldn't tell. I, I don't think so. They were older by then. But, um. <laughs> But I love songs like um, Garden of Eden, Coma, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Really good. Um, They played Coma when I saw them a couple years ago here in uh, Phoenix. I like you to Coma. I like Dead Horse. I love that song. Like, I think most of, I actually, I think the albums are more solid than people give them credit for. There's like maybe five tracks I would leave off of both of them. Between both of them? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't so that's, I think I listened to the first one more than the second one. Actually, like, what's the, what's the point of the other "Don't Cry" version? I never listened to that. That's that's filler. That's that's they could they have taken that out, and of course, my world take that out. But the second one's got good songs. The second one has "Civil War," it has "Yesterdays," yeah, yeah. it has "Knocking on Heaven's Da Wow Da Wah Da Wah." It's got estranged. I fucking love estranged. No, 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 get on heaven. No, uh. it's, it's got estranged. It's got you could be mine from T2. Oh, yeah. You could be mine. It's, it's fucking good. It actually you make me want to listen to it right now. But I have to tell you, I actually think. I, I, I know people are going to hate me for this. I think pound for pound. I think Chinese democracy is the best album. You do? <laughs> yeah. I remember you I think you said that before. So, I'm not saying it's my it does I'm not saying that my favorite songs aren't on the Use Your Illusion records, but as far as like front to back, Chinese Democracy, every fucking song on that album is great. I put on that album. I remember Oh, here's a Start Me Up. 
I put on Chinese Democracy and I can just let it play. It's got an identity crisis. Like it's weird because yeah, Mickey works in that video. He plays the Shackler. I fucked up and and, and did the uh, I just did the dig riff. Don't 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 don't. That video is amazing. <laughs> that video is amazing. He looks like Prince. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, man, I, I I get it. Like the album itself, every or he looks tra- like the uh, the the guy from uh, the Goofy movie that they're going to see the concert of. Yeah, he, oh, Powerline. Yeah. <laughs> Let me finish my point on that fucking album, though. I get Go it. Ahead. Every song in that fucking album is very different. Like they all belo- they all they all like seem like they're from a different album, you know. Because the styles are so all over the place, but and I used to think it used to feel disjointed, but now it's just sort of become the identity of the record that everything is so different. Uh, but the tracks themselves are all good. I like them all. Uh, I was surprised it kept the same name through its entire production, fucking fifteen years or whatever. They didn't change the title of it. That is crazy. One thing I actually love though, man, is when they got back when they did this whole reunion thing. I think it's awesome, man, for the integrity of Axl Rose that it must, I guarantee you there was something in like the clause. There's something in their contract for getting back together. Like we're not ignoring the Chinese democracy shit. Like he stands by the work Mm -hmm. Um, and they got to play it. And I I actually like, I actually don't have a problem that it's not the complete original lineup. They should re-record it. Just fucking re-record it and have it slash play it and like. He could change shit if he wants. I, well, here's the... So, I like the... It, dude, they sound good when I... Because when I saw them live, they played about fucking four songs from the fucking Chinese Democracy. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it had Slash playing the solos, and it sounded good. And he didn't reenact. He didn't do the total same... He can't He can't do Buckethead and all these people that were on the album. He just kind of has to Slashify solos and play Slash solos. Mm-hmm. And they worked really well. Um, But I think it's cool. So, I actually like that they didn't get the entire original band back together because that would have been that would have been like a um a nostalgia trip like okay now we got to go out we're just going to play appetite for destruction the classics um, it is but, all the original people isn't it no but the drummer's still different the drummer's different and uh richard fortis took I- I- izzy's not in the band oh yeah it's just uh duff is he still alive yes he is what the fuck happened to him he went off the grid man it's it's Duff, Axel, and Slash. So, but I'm saying what I'm trying to say is, I think it's actually for the better that they didn't get all the original lineup back together, because then it would have been like a nostalgia trip, and they kind of would have gotten together. And you know, they just would have played like old shit. Mm. Like we can't, we gotta ignore all this shit, whatever, because we're the original. But now that they've got three classic members and different members, it just feels like the Mach Three lineup, right? Like this is the mm. a different version. Like I, I'm cool with that. Kind of like Use Your Illusion had a different version. Mm hmm. What are you doing? I've trapped them. Oh man, are they in Back to the Future 3 now? Hell yeah. Deadly Do Right shit. Oh, he's like Clint Eastwood. It's not working. Turn it off. Oh. Do you think they glued that shit to his face or did they just. He just didn't shave for like two days? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fake. Oh, so they're watching him. They're watching him on TV this whole time. Now they are. No, that's real. That's real scruff. So, if this is really Jeffrey Jones as hell, he'd be getting his ass fucked right now. <laughs> well, he'd be fucking little boys because it's he's the devil, so he would have his. <laughs> or is that Jeffrey Jones heaven? <laughs> yeah, probably. Do you think Jeffrey Jones? Jeffrey Jones should just believe in. Uh, like jihad and all that stuff, because you think that would serve him the best. That you know, his his version of of a heaven is virgins, ninety something virgins for him to fuck. Did you did you hear that like recent thing where they were like, actually, uh, when that was written, it probably would have translated to uh, the fuck was it, grapefruits or something? It was something. You get to fuck ninety grapefruits. You just get some grapefruits, like that chick that does the grapefruit blowjob. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did they put a microphone in the fucking dildo? 
Why'd they do? We got to get your throat noises. <laughs> what did she say? Like, she's like, uh, uh, <laughs> Something about the grapefruit being healthy. He's like, he's like you, uh, you're, <laughs> you're losing fat while he's sucking his dick. You lose, you lose fat while you're sucking his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been any new updates from um, the dog fucker YouTuber or the uh, son fucker YouTuber? You know, oh, the. Uh- <laughs> That one chick does videos all the time. She has a new channel, but the dog fucker, I guess, like she she uploaded a video where she was basically uh, crying, talking about how she got recognized at the the grocery store, and like people were like, "I can't go anywhere without people be like, oh, she's disgusting." It's like, what did you expect? That'll go away eventually. I mean, I think <laughs> if she just stays off YouTube and uh, hope. I mean, who knows? I guess like people will re-upload her videos. I, I think eventually she can kind of fade away. But come on, she'll get older. She can just dye her hair. Eventually, people won't recognize her. Yeah, just fucking move. Change your name. Like yeah, like aren't you? No, I'm not. I know. I get it all the time. People think I'm this YouTube dog fucker, but you know, I'm not. And then they, and then they like they go undercover. Like I gotta find out who she is, man. I went to her house. She has eight dogs. <laughs> and they all run in when her, they all smell in between her legs whenever she comes and sets down. It's her, I know it. She and then she has lo- to change it again. She has to leave. She keeps a schedule on her uh, fucking refrigerator with the days of the week that, you know, with the dogs on shift to fuck her. <laughs> so, how did the movie end? Because I kind of missed the ending there. I did too. I was, I was too you busy thinking about You don't remember you seen this movie? You were thinking about it. It's been a while. It's been a while. Did he get out? This song is jamming, though. Ugh. You don't... Faith Minton, Don Pardo... You don't remember the end, man? I thought you, like, worshipped this movie. I've seen it maybe three times in my life. Would it be ill-timed if we did Ghost Dad starring Bill Cosby? <laughs> I'll do it. We should do it. In honor. In honor of him getting put away, we should do fucking Ghost Dad <laughs> next. <laughs> we could do Jack... He's gonna get caught. Just you wait and see. <laughs> Why is everybody always picking on me? You think he thought about, you know, what he did while he's filming that? The Fresh Prince of Darkness. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't think he had a lot of shame, man. Uh, I don't know if he really did think about stuff like that. He he made it part of his material. I think we gotta do Ghost Dad, though, man, because he's a star of it. Unmarried with children. They're referencing our shows, baby. Because, like, you know, not being married and having kids is supposed to be, like, sinful. David Dukes of Hazard. David Dukes. David Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> Yo, what do you think, man? Do you think Ghost Dad's a good choice? I've seen it once in my life, but yeah, I'll do it. It's, I hate, I hate it, man, because I like the movie. I like, I, you know, it's funny. Um, <laughs> But we got to do it, and it's going to be endless. And it's great because for the first time in our entire non-professional career of doing podcasts, we can make all these tasteless jokes about Bill Cosby because everybody will be for it. Like, yeah, fuck that guy. (laughs) Right? Like, we can say horrible things about him. (laughs) And it'll be okay. I'm pretty sure we'll not get demonetized. Maybe, yeah. So, yeah, for sure. I think it's a pretty good idea. But you guys at home, let us know what you guys think we should do. I'm kind of all about this 80s and 90s thing. Right now, this was fun. Uh, Scream Factory, if you're listening, do it. Do this movie. Put out Ghost Dad. Oh, I meant this one, but that one too. I know. <laughs> um, but no, let us know. Give us more recommendations on what you want to, uh, us to do, and we'll try and add them to the old list. Gosh, uh, one thing we have to do eventually, like really soon. I, I, I don't remember who requested it, but somebody who was... who who who. who offered to send us a copy of house house of the dead or no alone, alone in the dark. In the dark yeah we got to do alone in the dark for him mm-hmm. like so we will do alone in the dark um sometime in the next few weeks i promise i think we should um let me go ahead and see if we have any comments that i can yeah. pull, pull out and we can read to end the show let's see what we got here mm, so 
Oh, the last commentary that we did was Terrifier, which check that one out, by the way. We got Josh James of R-Rated on there. That one was really good, and that was actually a really good movie. Um, Joey Wilkerson commented on that, that he thinks it looks really promising. It is. Please watch it. Um, we have some new listeners, it seems. Monolith Preacher. He um, he comments on our Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer commentary. He gave us quite a big... Um, comment let me kind of read the whole thing for you um monolith preacher because you're a newbie i really want to know each of your top fives now henry is the kind of film no one ever watched and you guys really nailed why it's so good thank you also serbian isn't bad if you watch it as an indictment of their government as it was intended okay (laughs) that's what the guy says yeah that's what it says but it's still got the nasty shit in there um, I feel gore films only work when they're covering subjects you can't in other media, and in a Serbian film, is like that. Um, it kind of annoys me how horror has lost its ability to be serious and instead goes for shock. I don't feel Serbian did that per se. I think that people hyping it up did. That's a, that's a pretty interesting approach to it. I'll give him that. Um, I still have no desire to watch a guy fuck a baby. Um, I haven't looked- How could you not want to see that? I haven't looked through your videos yet, but if you haven't already, you need to do the, a commentary on Martyrs from 2008. I've seen that. Is it good? It's been a while. I remember liking it okay. It's been a while since they I made it been, recently. Hold my head up high. <laughs> been a while since I first saw you. Those lyrics are dumb. Um, that's one of my top hidden gems alongside the criminally underrated Noroi. N O R O I from 2005. Are you familiar with that? I don't think so. No, Roy. We'll have to check that out because that intrigues me. Um, because I want to see what that's about. So thanks a lot, Monolith Preacher. Um, it's really good to see fresh faces, and we will. He wants to know our top fives. Mm-hmm. Can we do that without going over too long? Well, I wasn't even on that episode too, so he probably doesn't want to know my top fives. Uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. That was you and uh, River Man. You weren't on that? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm, really? Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. My top five? Oof. I don't know. Um, given the movies that you're quoting here, Monolith Preacher, mine might sound hip. Because, you know, I, I don't... I'm not as big into the exploitation genre as Riverman. And I know Henry. Henry's like a movie that I do love that's exploitation, but Riverman's definitely much bigger into it. When he go, when he's on the show next, we'll uh, Zach help remind me, and we'll we'll all give our top fives. I can think of a couple like movies like that, like Savage Streets. Henry's good. Uh, you ever seen Ken Park? No. K E N P A R K. It's a good one. Uh, fucking <laughs> Island of Death. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you get you talk about doing that. We should do that. We were going to, but she you did you wanted to move for it. <laughs> okay, well, keep it on the list or put it in there and we'll do it, I promise. Um but yeah, I mean my my top five favorites is probably not gonna th- Henry might be in the top five, to be honest with you. It might be. I don't know. But it's I don't know. It's it's not. It's probably gonna look a little different than Riverman's. But when we're all on the show together, I, how about I think we should do that next time we have River and Josh James on, which will be any time I'm sure. We should all do top fives. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll save that one when we have everybody. Um, but yeah, come back for that. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, another another new guy, another new listener. I think Raymond Ball. Ba what a ba the bang the dang diggy diggy diggy. Raymond Ba what a ba. Raymond Ba what a ba. He uh from he commented on Rob Zombie's Halloween from tw- two thousand seven. Uh, the commentary for that. I didn't mind elements of the film. Granted, I would have liked it if Michael had killed Laurie instead. Harris should have been the lead character to me. They kind of ruined Laurie's character. I don't care for her much. She's not much of a fighter. I like Michael's look in this movie though. That that movie's. I, I don't. I still don't mind the first Rob Zombie Halloween. I was thinking about making that first Halloween commentary the the revival classic this week. I've been forgetting to put revival classics up s- some weeks. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get them. We'll get them. Most of the time they go up every week. Um, and I'm trying to see. 
That'll be a good stopping point. We'll call those good. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort of highlight the new listeners. That's really cool. Anyway, um, keep leaving comments and stuff like that, and we'll be sure to pluck them off and read them at the end of the episode. And also, um, for all you new guys out there that hurt, haven't heard us say it a million times ad nauseum, but if you're on YouTube, make sure you're liking the channel. Click the stupid fucking bell and then tell the bell that you want to be alerted every time that we post a video because Google wants to make you work harder. Mm -hmm. Uh, But also, thank you. And but do know that we're also on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on Stitcher and the like. So check us out on actual podcast um, podcast platforms. Uh, The podcasts typically go up earlier and we can get away with a lot more because well, they're not Nazis like Google is. On Google here, if you guys are new to the channel, you'll notice that there's no audio from the movie in the background. You know, it's kind of stripped down bare bones. I mean, it's still great. Maybe Nazis is a little harsh. They're not putting numbers on our arms or anything. Okay, that is a little harsh. (laughs) Zach's an asshole. But, like I said, if you could check us out and go on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from, you're going to see Zach do some sweet intros and outros. And we're going to have movies in there, and they're just a lot more fun. And we can say certain things and, you know, not be afraid of getting totally removed from the YouTube platform. So, so yeah, we still get demonetized for everything. So it is what it is. But check us out there, too. And when you do go over there, can't stress it enough. Uh, for example, on iTunes, leave us five star rating if you like what we do and leave us a little review. A couple of words goes a long way because that's how we rise to the top in a place like iTunes. We we um, gain more exposure is the more ratings you have. So please show some love. And if you're a longtime listener and you haven't done it yet, please show some love over there. We would greatly appreciate it. And if you do and you happen to have come from YouTube, comment in the comments that you did so, and we'll give you some sweet acknowledgement. And like I said, Zach already said he'd suck your dick, so just let us know you did it, and Zach's going to owe you one nut. Exactly. Exactly. All right, well, that's all we got. Zach, you got any final words? I saw I got made it. Uh, We we got Retro Rampage coming out, but it's already out because it's Sunday for us, but not for you. Okay, so yeah, Zach, that's a good point, too. I will say that. Uh, check out our other shows too if you're not familiar with those we have retro rampage where it's basically us talking a bunch of bullshit while playing games um we just did the resident evil remake for those of you that um are into games maybe some of you aren't um we have other podcasts deep end with aaron lipscomb we have um, a bunch of classic episodes we have interviews on the channel and on itunes and whatnot you can go back through the archives and find and uh of all as always mac and zach save the world um, check out their YouTube channel and, and show them some love on iTunes as well. They do drunken commentaries, which are pretty funny. Um, but other than that, we'll leave you guys there. Adios. Bye-bye, puppets. Until next time.